Samurai Japan has a secret weapon at the 2023 World Baseball Classic. Everyone knows about MLB players like Shohei Otani, Yu Darvish, and Seiya Suzuki, and even MPB superstars like Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Rogi Sasaki, and Munetaka Murakami are starting to get recognized by sites like MLB Trade Rumors and Fangraphs that track future MLB talents. But one name that most people are not familiar with is Oryx Buffalo's pitcher Yuki Udagawa. In fact, even some Japanese fans are not totally knowledgeable about him because he just made his MPB debut in August of 2022 and just half a year later, he's about to make his national team debut on the world stage. That's a very quick rise to prominence and it obviously begs the question, how? How exactly did this 24-year-old go from a nobody in the 2020 MPB draft to one of Japan's premier relievers in such a short period of time. Udagawa was born on November 10, 1998 to a Japanese father and Filipino mother in Koshigaya City, Saitama, and started playing baseball in elementary school. He continued to pitch throughout his teen years and eventually attended Sendai University and immediately made the baseball team. In spring of his senior year, he earned attention from MPB teams as he pitched to an 0.64 ERA across 28 and a third innings with 35 strikeouts as a starting pitcher. His fastball only averaged around 87 miles per hour, but he could occasionally run it up to the mid-90s, indicating his potential to grow. He also had a really sharp forkball which he used as his main swing and miss weapon. In October of 2020, Udagawa went undrafted in the standard MPB draft, but the Oryx Buffaloes selected him in the third round of the developmental player draft. In MPB, developmental players typically earn a minimum salary of around $20,000 and can train with the organization's farm teams, but are not allowed to be registered on the top team unless their contract is upgraded to an MPB one. So these picks are mostly treated as lotteries for lower end prospects. And Oryx also drafted Udagawa's college teammate Yukikazu Sano later in the developmental rounds. Both players though ended up agreeing to full MPB contracts in November. Now Udagawa only pitched in one official game with the Buffalo's farm team in 2021, his first professional season, allowing one earned run in just two thirds of an inning. But he featured in the Miyazaki Phoenix League, which is basically Japan's version of the Arizona Fall League, where he had the opportunity to develop a new pitching delivery and work on his form. At Buffalo's camp the following spring, he stated, quote, I wasn't sure where this new delivery would take me, but I'm glad it seems to fit me well. Udagawa suffered a small setback in March after being infected with COVID, but he came back even stronger, bulking up to work on getting his velocity consistently up in the mid-90s. He also learned a new forkball grip from veteran teammate Yoshihisa Hirano, providing him with an improved wipeout pitch. Across 15 appearances on the Buffalo's farm team, he managed a 1.88 ERA, striking out 21 batters, allowing just 8 hits and 3 walks in the first half of 2022. He was even named to the fresh All-Star game in July, which is basically Japan's equivalent of the Futures game. And just a few weeks later, Udagawa was finally called up to the Buffalo's top team to replace right-handed pitcher Yuta Kuroki. He made his MPB debut on August 3rd with a very impressive scoreless 8th inning against the Seibu Lions, even striking out superstar slugger Hotaka Yamakawa to record his first career punchout. He surrendered a walk-off home run against Ukyo Shuto of the SoftBank Hawks on August 13th, and he gave up another run to the Lotte Marines a few days later, but after that, Udagawa was practically unhittable. He finished August with a 2.16 ERA with 11 strikeouts in 8 and a third innings and quickly transformed from a guy that was only trusted in losing efforts to a guy that entered games in all sorts of high leverage situations. He had his first multi-inning outing on September 8th after Ren Mukunoki got pulled from his start in the second inning due to an injury. Here, Udagawa proved his ability to come up clutch when his team needs him most, throwing two and two-thirds perfect innings in emergency relief, striking out five of the eight batters he faced to earn his first career-winning decision. From this point, manager Satoshi Nakajima felt way more comfortable letting him throw multiple innings in relief as the Buffaloes built a dominant late-inning combo with Udagawa, Soichiro Yamazaki, 
and Jacob Waggis back. The emergence of these three explosive arms was probably the biggest reason why the Buffaloes were able to catch up to the Hawks and win the pennant. Udagawa was absolutely lights out down the final stretch, finishing the regular season with 13 consecutive scoreless outings with 21 strikeouts in 14 innings. For his entire 2022 regular season, Udagawa posted an 0.81 ERA in 22 and a third innings with a 36.8% strikeout rate and a 13.8% walk rate. So he did give up his fair share of walks, but the sheer dominance of his stuff was undeniable. For pitchers with at least 20 innings pitched, he was 3rd in ERA, 4th in K rate, 12th in FIP, 6th in XFIP, 11th in whiff rate, and 1st in put away percentage. But where Udagawa really made his name was the playoffs. In 9 and 2 thirds frames between the Climax series and the Japan series, he struck out 15 batters and allowed 0 runs, extending his scoreless appearance streak even further. His most memorable outing, in my opinion, was Game 4 of the Japan series, where Udagawa came in to relieve Taisuke Yamaoka in the fifth inning with one out and a runner on third in a 1 0 ball game and struck out both batters to escape the jam, then pitched a scoreless sixth. He was truly unhittable for the last two months of 2022, not allowing a single run after August 16th and becoming a high leverage fireman to help Oryx win their first championship since 1996. Now, we don't know how Udagawa will perform in his first ever international tournament at the 2023 WBC. He's one of three Hafu on the roster alongside Yu Darvish and Lars Nukbar. It's just really hard to predict such a short tournament like this. If his form is off at the start of the tournament, maybe manager Hideki Kuriyama doesn't trust him enough to go back to him. Or maybe he's sharp from the get-go and helps Samurai Japan win the championship just like he did for Oryx. Whatever happens, I can't wait to see how he builds on his 2022 campaign because, believe it or not, he's still eligible to win the Pacific League Rookie of the Year award in 2023 because he hasn't thrown 30 innings at the MPB level yet. So he is definitely my choice for the award, and I hope he gets the opportunity to become a starter down the line because he does have the potential of becoming one of the most dominant arms in the country. Special thanks to my patrons, Japanball.com, Chris J, Jonathan Greenberg, Hinosato Yaku, Poker Pack Rat, Corgi Racing, Anthony Pang, Jake Royce, Marcus Hill, Yua Bird, Ryan Fox, Jeff W, Char Aznable, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, Christopher Woods, Samantha Garavay, Yuki Summerine, Kud, Jem Morelos, Gabriel Foss, Kurt Berglund, Eduardo Granados, Kotaro Imahayashi Kim, J1, Tom Musa, Mike Braun, Lucas Bora, Stu22, Alex Irish, Marty Mercury, PB Cow98, Tokyo Kyojin Fan, Dave Hackerson, Brainlet Wojak, Riku, Joe Hironaka, Joey Mellows, C. McDonald, and Baseball Enser. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB content in English.